Hey everyone, I need some hot water for another project I'm working on, so I've got another hot water test for you. These are both things you've seen before, but I've never used it in this combination. So this is the copper coil inside the flue, and this is the insulated wood stove that's specifically designed to keep all the heat inside and burn more efficiently and then be utilized for specific purposes. So I'm gonna run this test just like the other ones, take readings, and then be able to share the data with you at the end. For the test, I'll be heating 28 gallons of water that's in the barrel here, and the barrel is lined with insulation. Just like the other tests, I'll be taking temperature readings at the bottom and the top of the heating coil, the water coming out of the heating coil as it's just been heated, and then the overall water temperature of the water in the barrel. There's a pump that pushes the water from the bottom of the barrel up through a copper coil that's suspended on the inside of the flue. The water comes out the top of the coil and is recirculated back down into the barrel. Reversing the flow of the water is called counterflow, and it would improve the overall efficiency by a bit, but it eliminates the possibility of removing the pump and running the system fully off-grid off just a thermosiphon. I've done previous tests with this same copper coil on a traditional wood stove and also a rocket stove. And I've also tested systems where the copper coil is wrapped around the outside of the flue, wrapped in insulation, or put in a medium like graphite to help transfer the heat. All right, let's get it going. Please remember, likes and subscribes really help the channel so I can keep the content coming. I love to hear your comments and suggestions down below, and if you want to help us directly, you can do that over on Patreon. 10 minutes in and this thing is screaming along. We're at 1200 degrees down here Fahrenheit, and we're at 450, so the copper coil is taking out a ton of heat. 15 minutes in and it is still cruising. It's at 1400 down here at the bottom, 516 at the top. It's taking out so much heat. The water coming out of the hose right now is about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, and that's it. We've hit 110 degrees at the barrel and it only took 22 minutes. I didn't add any wood. This is still on the first load of wood. It's still burning at 1200 degrees down here. It's 450 at the top. So it is just sucking out that heat. And I'll have to compare this to the other test, but that seemed really fast. So I'll let this die down, break the whole thing down, and then head inside to go over the numbers. All right, that was the best water heater setup yet, and I think it really validated the insulated wood stove design. Bear in mind, any system with the coil inside the flue is not safe for indoor setups, but for anything around the property when you need hot water, like heating a hot tub or small-scale agriculture, this thing heats up water and it does it fast with barely any firewood. It took only 22 minutes to heat 28 gallons from 59 degrees Fahrenheit to 101. I loaded the wood stove at the beginning with about five pounds of sycamore firewood and I never added any more wood and that would give it an efficiency of about 31%. But there was a ton of wood left and it burned for another 45 minutes after it hit the target temperature. So the efficiency is actually a lot higher than 31%. I just can't calculate it because I don't know exactly how much firewood was left unburnt. It came up to temperature really quickly. It was easily able to hover in the 13 to 1400 degree range, and within 12 to 15 minutes, I was making 140 degree water. I'll quickly compare it to some of the previous tests I've done just to show you exactly how much better this system was. The rocket stove had previously been the fastest method, taking 23 minutes to heat up the same amount of water, but this one did it in 22 minutes with far less fuel, meaning much more efficiently. Now rocket stoves are great, but one of the issues with them is for a rocket stove to rocket, it needs a ton of air flowing through it, so the air's moving really fast. And this is a relatively short heat exchanging coil, so the air is just moving too quickly to transfer enough of the heat, which is why in rocket stove systems you often see long, elaborate heat exchange systems, which is really great, but it's just not ideal for small, modular, and mobile systems. The next test to compare it to is the same copper coil system, but just a typical traditional wood stove. The advantage with this wood stove over a traditional wood stove is that this one's designed to keep all of the heat in instead of radiating it out into a room. So this is gonna do two things. One, it's gonna send all of the heat to the specific application, in this case, a heat exchanging coil. And two, it's gonna increase the combustion temperatures on the inside of the wood stove, which is gonna to lead to a more complete combustion and a more efficient combustion. So less creosote and more heat per volume of wood you burn. The traditional wood stove with the same coil setup took 32 minutes, so almost 50% longer than this new setup, and it had an efficiency of about 33%, which is still pretty good, but probably quite a bit less than this new one. So comparing this new setup to both of those previous tests, I get much higher temperatures closer to the rocket stove, but I do it with a much slower airflow, more similar to the traditional wood stove. So I sort of get the best of both worlds and I'm able to apply that heat directly to the water coil. 
Lastly, I'll just compare it to the coil on the outside of the flue, just so that we know where all the different systems stand. The coils on the outside of the flue are much less efficient at heat transfer, but they do have a few perks. There's less creosote, it's easier to clean the flue, there's less chance of galvanic or acidic corrosion, and they're much less likely to lead to a chimney fire, but if you need hot water fast, they're just not the way to go. So the external coil with no insulation or anything took 118 minutes and was only 9% efficient. This is barely worth doing. And the best version of the external coil was when it was surrounded in a graphite powder filled jacket and then wrapped in insulation. And that still took 42 minutes and was only 15% efficient. So while it was a big improvement over the external coil with no insulation or anything, it was still quite a bit slower and less efficient than these internal coil designs. So final thoughts. Really, I think the only way to take the next big step into efficiency is to put the coil inside the actual wood stove or just to move on to actual water jacket systems, both of which I'm gonna be experimenting with in the future. But with these designs, I was trying to make something modular that can be added to an already existing wood stove and the wood stove itself doesn't need to be altered at all. So I'm really happy with this design and until I get into water jackets and boilers, this is the system that I'll be using when I need hot water around the property. Like always, I'll put up all the data over on Patreon, but for now, I need to get back to the other project I'm working on. So I hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.